So, Mr. RGB Pixels, what makes you think you're qualified to be in my light show this year? Well, can your old lights do this? Uh, well, I mean, probably not, but like... Can your old lights do this? I mean, now that you mention it, they probably can. Can your old lights carry out a full conversation with you like I'm currently doing? I'm just some LEDs and microchips, yet you're talking to me. You think you're the one in control, when really it's me, ha 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 ha. Okay, you're hired. Hey everyone, thanks for watching How To Pixel. My name is Nick, and today we're talking all about the magic behind smart RGB pixel lights. How do they work? How can you use them in your own light show and control them to make an awesome huge light display or even use them in tiny little projects you're working on? This video is actually part of a series of videos I've been working on to make the most ultimate beginner friendly tutorial playlist that will show you everything you need to know to make awesome epic light displays. So if you're interested in how the entirety of a light show works, then I recommend checking out that playlist after this video. But if you just want to know how RGB pixels work, then that's what we'll be covering today. Like always, this video is going to be split into different chunks, so please feel free to use the timestamps in the scrub bar or in the description below so you can skip to whatever part of the video you want to see right now so you can get the information you need. But let's jump right into this and start off with what do pixels do? RGB pixels are probably the most advanced, coolest type of lights that are out and available right now. They allow you to have full control over what every single bulb on the strand does. Any one of these bulbs can light up any color you can imagine, and you can control each of these bulbs individually. So if you want one of these to be a certain color, and then the, uh, the next one to be a color, and the rest of them to be flashing a different pattern, you can do that because you have full control over the entire strand. There are technically 16,777,216 different colors you can make with any one of these pixels. Now, obviously, you're not gonna be able to tell that there's 16 million different colors because some colors are so closely related you can't see a difference, but that should prove to you that you can like make any color you want. And then on top of this, you can change what the strand is doing 40 times in one second, which is basically making the lights do a different pattern every 25 milliseconds. That's how you see all those light shows with awesome fast moving effects that are across the whole house. It's because the technology in these are so amazing that you can do so many different things with them. The only limit as to what you could do with pixel lights are first, your program software, more on that in a minute, and your imagination. Now before we move on to the section about how do these lights do what they do, I'm going to clear up some terms with pixels first so you aren't confused. Because there are multiple different lights that could seem like pixels, and there are multiple types of pixels, and they all work a little bit differently. So it's important that you understand the difference between them. There are a lot of products out there that could say they have RGB lights. But RGB lights can mean a different thing from RGB pixels. If it says pixels, that means there's smart lights like these where they can do the millions of different patterns and colors and all of that. But if it just says RGB lights, that could imply that they aren't smart lights. They are what we call dumb lights. Trust me, I know the naming schemes are amazing for these. Dumb RGB lights can still make any color you want out of the 16 plus million colors and you can select any of those, but the whole entire strand must be doing the same thing. Smart lights means you can control each individual bulb, but dumb lights mean that you can only control the entire strand. So if you have a strand of dumb lights, that means that they all have to be green or they all have to be white or all have to be red. You can pick whatever color you want still, but the whole thing has to do the same thing. You can't have half the strand be one color and half the strand be the other color 
because they're dumb lights. They don't have the knowledge to do that. So normally in those awesome light shows you see with all the different patterns and stuff, they almost always use smart pixel lights. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a light show use dumb lights, but it is possible. You probably could save a little bit of money if you use dumb lights instead of smart lights, but you just lose a whole lot of control and there isn't much information out there about how to make a light show with dumb lights. So that's why everyone always uses smart lights because you can have full control of it. It just looks awesome. And there's also a lot more information out there about them. On to our next term, I'm gonna talk about what the RGB means in RGB lights. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And it's how the pixel lights make all of their endless colors. You may be wondering, how do these tiny little bulbs have the possibility to make 16 plus million different colors. You can't put 16 million LEDs in this little thing, which is correct, but you can put three LEDs in these. So inside each of these bulbs, there is a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED. That's where you get your RGB. So if you want the pixel to turn on blue, it's gonna turn on the blue LED inside. If you want to turn on red, it's going to turn on the red LED inside. But here is where the magic comes into play. If you want a color besides red, green, and blue, like let's say purple, it will turn on both the red and blue LED, which mix inside to make the light appear like it's purple. It can mix any of the three LEDs inside at different intensities and brightnesses to make any of the colors you can imagine. Now you might be wondering something. We were all taught in preschool that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Or we see printers using cyan, magenta, and yellow. So then why do pixel lights have red, green, and blue LEDs in them? How does that work to make all of these different colors? Well, it's something to do with subtractive and additive primary colors. The red, yellow, and blue, or the colors that your printer uses to mix and print other colors, those are all subtractive primary colors. But red, green, and blue are additive primary colors. I'm not gonna get into it any further than that because that could be its own separate video, but it's really interesting and it has to do with the wavelength of lights and just how the pixels work differently than obviously painting colors on a piece of paper. And then just as a quick final note before we move on to the next section, you might sometimes see RGB lights that are labeled as GBR or BRG or RBG and you can rearrange the letters in a lot of different combinations. All these different variants still work the exact same and look the exact same, but it's to do with the internal pieces and it has to do with how the LEDs are addressed in each bulb. You don't need to worry about it too much since most lights are RGB, but now you know that if you see one of these other combinations, it's the exact same thing, just the insides are a little bit different. So we know the what. What do pixels do? But now let's move on to the how. How do the pixels do all of these amazing things? So I'll only be explaining how smart RGB lights work, or pixels, since most people don't use dumb lights in their light shows anyway, like I said. Pixel lights need two different things to make them work. First off, like all lights, they need power. That's kind of a given because you can't do anything if your lights don't have power. So that's the simpler of the two items. The second thing though, which is the more tricky item, is they also need a data signal. Data is what they use to make themselves do as you command. And every single pixel on any strand of smart light you buy, each have their own microchip inside of each bulb. So as you can see here with this bullet style pixel, there's that little microchip inside. And then you can also see some other components too on the other side of the circuit board. There's some capacitors and resistors. And each pixel might have different things inside depending on the kind you get, but they'll all have a microchip inside. And then connected to the microchip is an RGB LED. And that LED has the red, green, and blue LED all inside. You can sort of see it right here that the main bulb has four different connections to the circuit board for it. 
There's one for the red LED, one for the green LED, and for the blue LED. And then the fourth one is the ground connection, so all three of the LEDs can have a ground. Now, don't ever worry about having to assemble pixels yourself. When you buy them, they'll always be assembled and the circuit board will all be inside each bulb and it will all be ready for you to use. However, pixel lights are quite a bit more expensive because they have all this awesome technology inside. Right now in the middle of 2025, it's about $30 for 100 lights. So quite a bit more expensive than Christmas lights. But I think it's worth it because it's just mind blowing how much they can cram in each one of these little bulbs so you can have control over the whole strand. But going back to data for the pixels, when the microchip gets the instructions for what it has to do, it will just simply control the RGB LED inside. But how do the microchips get their instructions? Well, you'll connect the beginning of a strand of pixel lights to a pixel controller that is made just for controlling lights. This will get connected into one of these ports with a different connector, obviously, since this will fit. And then the controller tells the whole strand what to do. Now to break it down even farther so we can see how the controller does this, I like to think of it as this analogy. Basically, the controller will print up a huge stack of papers with all the instructions for the pixel lights. And the instructions for one single microchip will be on one single piece of paper. It then sends that massive stack of papers down the line to each pixel and each pixel is connected with a data wire. When the very first pixel gets that huge stack of papers, it will take just the top sheet of paper because it knows that's the only one it needs. And it will then take the rest of the stack and pass it to the next pixel in the line. That pixel will see the stack of papers and again, take just the top sheet and then pass it along again. And it goes like that through the entire strand and each pixel takes just the top sheet that's there and passes along the rest until there's one sheet left that gets to the very last pixel at the end of the strand. When each of the pixels get their sheet of paper, it will have all the instructions to tell the microchip what exactly to do for this given millisecond. And if you're running these lights really fast with patterns changing super quickly, every 25 milliseconds, a new sheet of paper will get to each pixel and a new stack will be going down the line. There's just so much going on so quickly inside of any strand of pixels and it's amazing how it can do all of these different things. So I hope you were able to understand everything just now because I'm about to throw in another confusing item into this video. The information that's written on each sheet of paper for the pixels to receive can be written in different languages. By languages, I just mean different ways that the controller can encode all the sheets of paper with all the instructions on them. All pixels out there will only be able to work with one protocol or one language as we're using in our example. And if they don't get the data in the protocol that they know how to read, then they just won't work or sometimes they can even get damaged. A lot of high quality controllers out there can speak multiple different languages or basically work with a lot of different protocols. Some controllers will only allow you to select one protocol for the entirety of the board, while others will allow you to use a different protocol for each port. Now, what are the different type of protocols? Well, there's a lot of them out there, but I'll just list a few of them. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna look over here so I can read off a whole list of the different variants. There are the WS variants, such as WS2811, 2812, 2812B, TM variants like 1803, 1809, 1814, APA variants, GS variants, LPD, SM, SK, UCS, and the list goes on forever. Some of these protocol variants are so wacky that they need two data wires as well. They need just the regular data wire and then a clock wire, which helps them keep in time. So with all of these different protocols, how are you going to decide which one to use? It's probably got to be confusing in some long list of instructions, right? No, just go with WS2811. It's that simple. WS2811, it's the main one everyone uses, the most common. Just go with it. The only reason I even explained all these different protocols to begin with is controllers still have the options to change them. And you might stumble across pixels sometimes when you're trying to buy them 
that are in different variants and you don't want to accidentally buy the wrong type because then you won't be able to use it with certain controllers. So literally everyone uses WS2811. Almost all places that sell pixels will sell those and almost all controllers work with those, which is why I think it's the version you should choose. The only time where you might run into seeing other variants is if you're looking on Amazon or eBay. Just make sure that if you search pixels, type in WS2811 with them. Okay, so you got through the hardest part, which is seeing how we get the data to the pixels. Now we're going to move on to the easier item, which is how we get the power to the pixels. All pixel lights out there cannot be connected to a normal wall outlet like Christmas lights can. Typical household outlets like these commonly use 120 or 240 AC volts. But if you were to plug a strand of pixel lights into them, it would go... Pixels use much lower DC voltages. So let's take a look at the wires going between each of these pixels. If you look, there are three different wires that go between pixels. One of them is the data wire, which is normally in the middle, and that's the one we just talked about, where the instructions are sent down the line. The other two wires are for power. One of them is a positive wire, and one of them is a negative wire for your DC power. So since we need lower voltages for the pixels, you're going to need to buy things called power supplies. And these can connect into a wall outlet and take 120 or 240 volts, and then it will step it down to the voltage the pixel needs. So you can connect your pixels to the power supply. There are three different voltages that almost all pixels use, and they are 5 volts, 12 volts, or 24 volts DC. Most people don't use 24 volt pixels because most controllers can't work with them. But a lot of people use 5 volts and 12 volts. So you'll have to decide which one of those two you want to use. I have some other videos though talking about the differences between the two if you'd like to check those out later. So that's about it for how RGB pixel lights work. Now there are still a few things you have to do to be able to control them. But those I cover in other videos, I have some older ones and there will probably also be some newer ones in the future. The next step though would be using software on a computer to program the lights and make them do exactly what you want them to do. If you're still a little bit confused with all the different things I just threw at you, I really recommend checking out that beginner playlist I talked about. But if you're watching this video in the playlist right now, hopefully all of this made sense. And you can move on to the next video in line, which will be talking about the cost for buying different things in a light show. If you're watching these videos as I publish them, I'm realizing that I have published them out of order, but I'm hoping to organize them so it all makes sense when you watch it in the ultimate playlist. If at the end though, you're still really confused, please feel free to leave a comment down below with your question, and I can try to help you out and respond as soon as I can. Additionally, before we finish up, I'd just like to super quickly talk about channel memberships that I have set up here on the channel. If you really, really, really appreciate my videos and would like to help out more than just subscribing or liking the videos, then you can become a channel member for $2 or $5 a month. For $2 a month, you can become an Illumination Pro and you'll get a little badge next to your username whenever you leave a comment and you'll also get early access to new videos. Or for $5 a month, you could become an Illumination Jedi and get additional things too, like extra teasers for my light show or extra content just for members every now and then. That's only though if you really, really would like to help out. I don't expect it at all. And I appreciate everyone that watches, no matter whether you subscribe, become a channel member, or just leave after this video. End of advertisement. <laughs> So hopefully this video was useful and I hope the rest of the videos to come in the ultimate playlist will also help you for learning about how a whole light show works. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. But other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.